Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Fabio Mercurio of Bloomberg. I'm here at Global Derivatives 2013 with uh, Damiano Brigo, who is uh, a co-head of um, uh, financial mathematics. Uh, mathematical finance, yes. we prefer. Yeah, you that's say one. that at the Imperial College in London. That's good. And, uh, you know, I've known Damiano for so many years. We've been colleagues, we've worked uh, together, so I think everybody of you guys know that. Uh, Damiano has worked is extensively in many different fields, and especially in, uh, Damiano is one of the founders, you know, like uh, of, um, of CVA calculations at, at mat finance levels. It was more than 10 years ago. Now, now everybody talks about that. But uh, I remember that you were doing research, you know, back then, back in 2003 or something. Indeed, yeah. So, um, please tell us more about, I mean, uh, not only your current research interest, but also maybe, you know, the, the whole process that brought you uh, to the current level. Uh, and thank also, you. you have a book here. Yeah, so I mean, I'll try to recommend. summarize uh, some of the things, uh, as in the best talk show, they say, read my book. Uh, I'll try to summarize some of the things we discussed here. It's not easy, it's 500 pages of interconnected ideas, but basically it's a summary of 10 years of uh, research work uh, and uh, also operational work in a way. Um, so what happened, I think, uh, it was an evolution in the financial modeling, and especially what we are seeing in the last few years is a move from complex uh, payoffs and products uh, designed on single asset classes or single risks uh, to uh, simple products uh, uh, embedding uh, more complex risks. So for example, now credit risk is one of these uh, risks I'm mentioning, but we have also liquidity risk, funding risk. Uh, collateral is becoming more and more important. It's no longer something to relegate to the guys in the back office or in the middle office or you know, other departments of the bank. Even quants need to take into account collateral uh, extensively, and this is a, a development of the last few years. But the main message maybe we could give in this uh, you know uh, interview is that uh, all these risks interact uh, to some extent uh, to a point at where it becomes difficult to lab label a quantity as pure credit valuation adjustment and other quantity as a pure uh, funding valuation adjustment and also these risks uh, show up in uh, work I have been doing on multiple curves and you know they, they can partly be used to motivate the uh, origination of different uh, uh, interest rate curves. So it all connects together. This is uh, one of the new aspects, I think, uh, of the um, recent developments in the market. When you could afford, once you could afford to work on different areas of quantitative finance without paying too much attention to what other colleagues in other areas were doing, now the areas are all becoming more interconnected and uh, you really need to try to have a broader view of what's going on and you know, uh, w look at models in a more comprehensive way. Uh, and I think this is a good thing to some extent, but it makes life much harder as well. Uh, yeah, for us. I, mean, I, I, I think we agree because I mean, like sometimes people took only partial views, like uh, for a specific desk. Then I, I think we have to take like broader views, maybe at the bank level, uh, not only like at individual desk level, also in terms of special risk management, only trading trading level. But um, so one of the kind of discouraging things is that okay, people have been working these things for many years. Of course, you are one of the main uh, main authors, but. Uh, it's kind of hard to come up with clear definitions, even you know, even for uh, CBA and DBA. I mean, uh, you have a recent paper also on a close-out convention. So there seems to be still such a big like uh, uncertainty um, on uh, uh, not only the pricing models to use, but even on on, on the formulas. That should I agree. Be. Yes, the payouts are, are not certain. It's what I call the, in a bit of a silly way payout risk. I mean, uh, we don't even know for sure what the payout is when you price uh, uh, a CVA because the boundary condition at default uh, is not completely specified. You can look at the documentation by ISDA or other um, uh, you know bodies or agencies, but uh, these uh, documentation suggests some ideas, but it doesn't really tell you exactly how you should model the, the cash flows in the event of default, how the closeout is shaped, uh, what is the replacement cost for an instrument. And uh, it makes some suggestions, but in the end you can make two or three choices in one respect. You can decide, for example, also to look at who default first or not. To simplify the formula, you may take the first default out. 
uh, introducing some level of double counting and indeed in, in the end you're not sure about the payout so you can find that the different institutions or even the same one are pricing the same mm, mm, payoff in principle with very different numbers because they're implementing different versions of the payoff and not because of model risk which is something else as well but that comes uh, one a moment later. Uh, you know of course that CVA is a sort of an option on a netting set uh, involving very different instruments possibly so you need to model jointly all the risks uh, taking into account their dependence and the dependence of these risks with the fault and when you do this uh, accurately it's a formidable pricing problem that that is very risk sensitive, uh, model sensitive, sorry. So there is a lot of model risk, but as, uh, as you said, there is payout risk as well. You don't know the closeout. And the way you include funding costs, it was very interesting what you talked about this morning about differential rates. It's something we see also in funding because, uh, you know, depending on whether you have a surplus of assets or cash uh, to implement your edge or you don't have enough, you need to borrow or lend. And the, l and the rates at which you do this are different. And this very asymmetry requires you to know, uh, you know the value of the instrument in the future and transforms the pricing problem into a recursive uh, equation which is very hard to deal with numerically. But we need to find some ways around it. I mean the, the fact that the problem is complex uh, uh, cannot stop us. In the end we need to implement the decision making tools. This is what models are and these models need to, we need to find a way around the complexity, otherwise... Uh, I, know, I perfectly agree, maybe you should also like uh, uh, have be more vocal and go to like regulators and propose some specific solution because model risk is there but when it comes to uncertainty on uh, on the payoff definition, the closeout convention there, maybe you should go and say, okay, you know, <laughs> ISDA, this is the right closeout and uh, you, should be used <laughs> you should be able to propose the be uh, you know, a better way for, uh, you know, uh, for valuation purposes. And uh, I'm not sure that quants in general have this kind of... You're right, it's not a common quant skill, uh, that's true. But I think that conferences like this where we are now uh, speaking actually can help that because uh, the, it creates more connection between the people working in the area to a level that generates some sort of uh, common understanding that is not there if individuals don't really interact much and we may perhaps use events like this also to build a critical mass of uh, awareness in, in the sense that uh, we can then go to regulators uh, uh, by using you know a, a network of, uh, of people and try to make them aware of some of the subtleties in cases they are not yeah this is a very important task and in fact uh, I see more generally the role of the quant as evolving in uh, a person who should also be aware of the decisional process in the bank the operational model of the bank of the treasury of the market the way regulators mark the risks and penalize sometimes the, the, the trades and so on so I think it's it's uh, the skills of a quant are becoming more and more uh, comprehensive ideally and I think this is something you're, you're seeing as well in your job I'm pretty sure actually yeah uh, absolutely yes so it's uh, so this may be a new subject for a new book so because <laughs> when is there a new book coming out yeah no not another <laughs> no, one not, not for another. a while yeah not for a while so <laughs> I think, I think uh, it's, uh, yeah Maybe next year, next yeah, year. Yeah, in the next couple of years, yeah, we could do that. And the other thing you said, yes, I think it's uh, it's right. The definition of some of these, uh, um, you know, quantities that we look at now, like funding valuation adjustment, uh, there is a lot of debate on these uh, concepts uh, usually, and it's a good thing that there is debate, absolutely good. But sometimes the problem is that these things are not properly defined, and because of the above complexity, two people talking about uh, funding valuation adjustment can be talking about two different things, and they can be arguing because unawareingly they're talking about different things when they think they're talking about the Absolutely. same. Yes. So if we define, if we make an effort to have uh, also regulators converge on what is uh, a good definition of such quantities representing these new risks, we can maybe uh, go a step forward in the debate where we agreed on the basic definitions and then we start really debating things that are well defined. Otherwise the risk is that we debate uh, different definitions without being aware of this and then we end up, uh, you know, arguing uh, about things that are not really different yeah. just because we use different names. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. I think that's a great way to uh, end uh, the interview. So uh, thank you very much. Pleasure My pleasure, Fabio. Thank, thank you very much.